the first pre-release for Minecraft 1.20, the Trails and Tales update is here with updates for color recipes, fixes for old bugs and new deterministic loot drops. With pre-releases we should now expect to see mostly bug fixes going forward and might see more releases than only Wednesdays. My name is Sliced Lime, let me show you all the changes in pre-release 1. Let's start with crafting changes. Wool blocks, carpets and beds can now be colored regardless of what color they already have. Crafting any color of wool block, carpet or bed with one die in any shape will now result in a re-dyed version of the block. This also means the recipe for re-dyeing 8 carpets at once no longer exists. In gameplay news, a very old bug with nether portals has been fixed. When you arrive on the other side after using one, the portal effect will now fade away instead of becoming overpowering and staying on screen. Placing an end crystal immediately after entering the end no longer causes the dragon to fail to spawn. Some follow-up fixes have been made for the recent changes to supporting blocks. Entities now stick to honey blocks pushed by pistons even if their center point isn't over the honey block, and players can no longer get a full jump off a honey block by jumping with precise timing. Items now also get the effect of blocks they move on even if their center point is not over that block. In mob news, rabbits can now once again be affected by the jump boost potion effect. Let's move on to visual news. The block breaking animation is no longer off by one frame for the player breaking the block. And sprinting particles are now the right ones when sprinting on the edge of a block. In user interface news, a whole lot of minor grammar fixes have been made to various text strings. The options background now matches the dirt texture and the menu text now renders properly when the logo screen fades. In technical news, let's start with loot. The game now uses named random sequences to deterministically produce loot for loot tables. That means that for things like bartering or drops from killing mobs, in worlds with the same seed, the sequence of items will now be the same. The ID of the random sequence to use for a loot table is specified in a new field called random underscore sequence. In command news, using the string source for the data command now supports negative indices for the substring version. Specifying a negative index means an offset from the end of the string instead of the beginning. And the bug has been fixed with the game mode command, which means that switching to spectator mode no longer moves you slightly downwards. In damage type news, there are two new damage types, outside border and generic kill. Players outside the world border are now hurt by the damage type outside border instead of in the wall, and players killed using the kill command now use the damage type generic kill instead of out of world. This now also brings new, more specific death messages. Player name left the confines of this world for dying to the world border. Player name left the confines of this world whilst fighting attacker if it happened while fighting someone, and simply player name was killed for the kill command. In predicate news, the stepping on a predicate now works the same way as the supporting block in the game, which means it now works for blocks like trapdoors and carpets. In text and language news, several strings from inside the realm's interface that would previously always display in English can now be translated. And for the server.properties file, that file is now encoded UTF-8 by default. Finally, in stability news, several crashes have been fixed and a problem causing the nether to not load at all in upgraded worlds has been fixed. And that's it for Minecraft 1.20 pre-release 1. My name is Sliced Lime, thank you for watching, I'll see you next time.